Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Mama? Yes, Claudia? Where are you? Out here, in the kitchen. Why? Oh, I just wondered. Did you want something? No. You going to be long? Bertha and I are making a dessert. What do you want? Nothing. Where are you? What are you doing? How long are you going to be? And then when I come into you, you don't want anything. Oh, the house is so sort of empty. I was just trying to make up my mind whether you were coming back in here or if it was worth the trouble to go out in the kitchen to find you. And it wasn't worth the trouble. Well, you were coming in. The house is sort of empty without David. I... I suppose it is sort of good training. Training? What? David's off hunting with Jimmy. Men make such an important business of the things they do with men. I suppose when Bobby grows up, he and David will be off together all the time on men's business. And just what do you include under the heading of men's business? Oh, fishing, hunting. I can hardly call David walking over the fields with one 12-year-old boy and one 22 rifle hunting expedition. He's sweet, isn't he? Jimmy? Yes, he's a sweet boy. I didn't mean Jimmy. I meant David. I forgot you have a single-track mind. Yes, David's very sweet, too. I'm going to have a lot more sons. Because David's sweet? What better reason? He's wonderful with boys. It'd be a great waste if a whole lot of boys didn't have him for a father. I see. You're going to make a career of it for him. It's awful for a child not to have a father, isn't it? It's always a tragedy. It's never easy. Mom, it must have been awful for you with me after father died. It wasn't awful. It just stopped being wonderful. I wish boys and men didn't feel they had to play with guns. They're dangerous. I think you can set your mind to rest with David. He's quite a competent man, you know, and he has, after all, been through a war. Anything can happen with a gun. Anything. Anything can happen any time. Walking across the street, driving to the station. Mm, I learned that lesson with David's accident. People didn't feel they had to kill things. The world would be a better place to live in. Even little boys can be made callous to suffering and begin to think of guns as a way to settle. Now, now try for the big red tomato in the middle of the can again, Jimmy. Mm-hmm. Only this time, I aim just a little to the right. See, there's a crosswind blowing and just a hair high to compensate compensate for the distance. And keep my eyes open. Yeah, yeah. Now, this time, squeeze. Squeeze. Don't pull the trigger, but squeeze it. Slowly now. Slowly. Squeeze. I hit it! <laughs> All right, now load up and try again. Okay. All right. All right, now take your time. Easy does it. Eyes open. Squeeze. Let her rip. I hit it again. Now go over there and look at it. I have an idea. You'll find two holes right in the middle of the tomato. How about it? Two holes right in the middle of the tomato. (laughs) Here, look, Mr. Norton. Right plumb in the middle of the tomato. That's all right shooting, isn't it? Right plumb in the middle of the tomato is the best shooting there is, Jimmy. When it comes to a bullseye, there isn't anything better than the best. With a good rifle like this good rifle that belonged to my dad, I guess that made it easier. Yeah, it's a fine rifle. A good gun never hurts, but it's the marksman behind the gun who hits the bullseye. You mean I'm a marksman? Yeah, one of the best. And David Norton will give witness and testimony to the fact any time you want it. Now, how about setting up the can again and trying some more shots, hmm? Oh, gee, Mr. Norton. Just shooting at a tin can, that's not hunting. Anybody can hit a tin can. You uh, weren't so good when you started this morning. But I hit the bullseye twice after you learned me how to squeeze right and keep my eyes open. Gee, look up there on that branch, that robin. You don't shoot robins, Jimmy. I bet you I could hit it. No bet, Jimmy. I'm sure you could, but 
There are certain things that a sportsman shoots and certain things he doesn't. And Robbins isn't one of them? No. No, no sportsman shoots songbirds. A sportsman shoots either what he has to eat or can eat or destructive animals. Oh. Well, woodchucks are destructive. I suppose you could call them destructive, but not very. There's a woodchuck hole right over there by that stone wall. If we walk careful, we might catch him out of his hole. But walk careful. All right, Jimmy. Careful does it. beside that big stone. He's sitting up. He, he's just a little fellow. He looks like a baby bear washing his face with his paws. He's dangerous, he is. He looks awfully small to be dangerous, Jimmy. Don't make a noise or we'll lose him. Of course, you, you might let him grow up a bit more. He's great big now. They don't grow much bigger than he is. Now we'll be right quiet. Eyes open... Squeeze. Oh, that did it. Oh, gee, he flip-flopped right over his back and into his hole. You scared him. Well, Jimmy, I, I I, didn't see that branch. It was clumsy of me. I, I don't know how I could have stepped on that branch. Hunters got to be like Indians. No noise at all. If we'd been out after a big game, we would have lost it. Well, it was a small woodchuck, and we lost it anyway. How about going back to the tin can, and we can get some real shooting in? I'd be sissy to shoot at a tin can. Hey, there's another woodchuck hole just up the wall a ways. With your knowledge of every woodchuck's address in the county, I don't know if they'll be grateful to me for teaching you how to shoot straight. Now, this time we won't make any noise. Walk careful. All right, I won't make a sound. Look over that away. I don't see anything. Just under that blueberry bush. See its white tail? You can even see its nose wiggling. Yeah, I see it now. It's a it's a little cottontail rabbit. Don't move this time. Rabbits is scary. I won't move. Are you, uh... Are you sure you want to shoot it? Eyes open. Squeeze slow. <laughs> did, did I hit it? Don't you know? I... I closed my eyes. I'm afraid, Jimmy, that you not only closed your eyes, but you jerked the trigger. Did I? Mm -hmm. Oh, well, it wasn't a very big rabbit. No, he wasn't a very big rabbit, and you did everything all wrong, but I'm afraid you hit him anyway. He fell over behind that turf of grass. It was sort of an accident. I didn't deserve to hit it. Well, that won't cheer the rabbit up too much. Now, come on, let's go to him. Do we have to? Yes, Jimmy, uh... Sportsman doesn't kill game and leave it in the field. He shoots what he can use and no more, but he uses it. There. There he is. He's moving. He isn't dead. No, he isn't. Jimmy, here's another lesson to learn. Never let living things suffer. And if you ever wound an animal, follow it for 20 miles if you have to, so that you won't be guilty of letting it die a lingering death and torment. Now, you better finish what you began, Jimmy. Maybe it isn't hurt bad. Maybe he won't... You look at him, Mr. Norton. We'll both look at him, Jimmy. That's another lesson. A real man never starts anything he doesn't finish. He's such a little rabbit. He was big enough when you aimed at him. Now look here a second, Jimmy. Now you didn't hit this rabbit. Now that's an old wound. Somebody else shot it. It's been hit by a shotgun pellet here in the leg. Gee, that's good. Is it good? You tried to shoot it. I... I didn't really try. But? I... I closed my eyes and jerked the trigger. Why? So you wouldn't think me sissy. Well, anyway, who wants to shoot a rabbit like this here little one? Mm-hmm. Say, Mr. Norton, what do you think of hunters who shoot a rabbit and go off without finding and seeing if it's hurt or something? You know what I think, Jimmy? I think you've got the makings of a real sportsman in you. I think you're a boy your dad would have approved of. Will it die, do you think? It's not badly hurt. Might pull through. You could doctor it up, maybe, and I could nurse it, and it'd be all right again, and I could keep it for a pet. Yes, might live. Look, Jimmy, if you keep a rabbit for a pet, 
It's going to spoil any fun you'll ever have hunting rabbits. Oh, who wants to shoot rabbits? Oh, I'll carry him, Mr. Norton. I'll nuzzle him inside my shirt. If you'll carry the rifle. Hunting we will go. Hunting we will go. I Mama! Yoo-hoo, Mama! Hey, Mama, the mighty hunters have returned. Where? They just crossed the lawn to the door. David was carrying the rifle and Jimmy was carrying something. It's natural for men to kill things, so just pretend you don't object. You think I could eat anything that was... Hey! Hello. Hello, darling. Hi. Hello, Mama. Hi, Hi. Mrs. Norton. Well, the hunters have returned. Welcome home. There's a pot waiting on the stove. What do we eat? Venison, wild boar, caribou steak. <gasps> no, as I live, rabbit. Rabbit stew. Claudia, where did you put that bottle of iodine? Did one of you hurt yourself? The iodine's here in the whole cupboard. I'll get it. No casualties. Nothing to worry about. Oh. We brought home a rabbit. It moved. It's alive. Somebody shot it. Here's the iodine, the bandage and gauze. Who's hurt? The rabbit, Mama. Look, Jimmy, take this first aid material and the rabbit, and you'll find Fritz out in the barn. He's very good at fixing up animals. She thanks, Mr. Norton. And thanks, Mrs. Norton. Mr. Norton learned me a lot about hunting. He's a real sportsman. He's a very remarkable man, Jimmy. Very remarkable. You go off hunting, you bring back a wounded rabbit. Wouldn't it have been simpler not to shoot the rabbit in the first place? It was such a small rabbit. Well, it's, uh... It's a long story. I'll, uh, I'll tell you all about it when I get cleaned up. I have a sneaking suspicion that there's more to this than meets the eye. It is the wisdom of women, Claudia, to let a man tell his hunting and fishing stories in his own time and his own way. Just pray that he doesn't tell them too often. Waiting for parcels, waiting for service... Any kind of waiting is irksome, even though you have time to spare. That's why so many department stores and beauty shops have installed Coca-Cola coolers. If there's a cooler handy, you can drop a nickel in the slot, get ice-cold Coke, and wait refreshed. Say, Mr. King, mind if I interrupt you a second? Oh, not at all, Jimmy. What's on your mind? Oh, nothing special, except... except... Uh, except that you've decided not to become a hunter, is that it? Yeah, I guess so. I decided that once for myself, too. You did? That's good. That Mr. Norton, he's got a right idea. I'm glad you agree with him. What a swell guy. It must be great to be like him, always know what you're doing. Oh, I wouldn't say that David always knows what he's doing. Why, Jimmy, there are times when Claudia has him pretty rattled. Really? Well, Monday, for instance. A short episode at a second-hand car lot rattles David plenty. But then I, I don't blame him. It's a pretty rattling experience. Boy, I'll sure be around to find out what that is. Oh, I gotta go home to Ma now. So long, Mr. King. So long, Jimmy. Uh, good hunting. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes, and ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. The parts of Claudia and David on this program were played by Catherine Bard and Paul Crabtree, and the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola.